Welcome to Cooking from the Cave. I'm Chef Pete Truziak and today I'm going to be demonstrating beer braised oxtails for you. Now this is a recipe that's going to take some time and it's great in any kind of weather, whether it's a hot summer day or it's a cold winter day. Um, but this is just a recipe that you got to become familiar with and you can change it up however you like with some of the seasonings. Today I'm going to be focusing on uh, using a little curry as well as paprika and some dried herbs on these uh, uh, oxtails. Now oxtails usually come in a pack about a pound and a half to two pounds. This is a two pound pack and they come in different sizes. The key is that the bone is still there and the marrow is still there because a lot of people love that rich flavor that you get from the marrow in the uh, actual oxtails themselves. To start off we're going to get our pan heated up. And I'm going to turn it to a medium heat. While that's heating up I'm going to sprinkle this with the curry the paprika and the dried herbs. Follow it up with a little salt and pepper. And we're going to rub or massage this, uh, these oxtails with the seasoning. It's about a tablespoon of dried herbs and a fourth of a teaspoon of curry and a fourth of a teaspoon of the paprika. Uh, a teaspoon of salt and I'm just rough guessing um, about a teaspoon of black pepper and you just really want to coat these real well with this so that when you sear them the seasonings that are on here are going to be infused into the actual oxtails themselves. Now this is a great dish you get it in your slow cooker you put it on the stove and you just let it braise for three to four hours and they come so tender it's very easy to do if you're using a slow cooker or something, you get these going before you go to work and when you come home, your dinner's ready. You can pair these up with almost any sort of vegetables, um, including almost any sort of starch. So rice, noodles, um, to beans, we're going to use carrots tonight, but potatoes work really well. Once your pan is up to, uh, up to temperature, we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of olive oil in here. I'm going to twirl that pan around so the bottom of the pan gets really well coated with olive oil. And whenever you're using a, a hot pan and you're adding oil, just make sure that oil moves around pretty freely, coats the entire bottom of the pan, and now we can begin to sear the oxtails. And after a few minutes on one side, we're going to flip them over and sear them on the other side. What we're going to pair up with these, as I alluded to earlier, is some carrots, onions, uh, there's some prosciutto, as well as some celery. Now I add the prosciutto early on in the stage so this fat from the prosciutto starts to kind of break down and really start to infuse into those uh, oxtails as well. And the prosciutto I just thinly sliced into real thin pieces. This would be uh, uh, what they would call a chiffonade of prosciutto. And I just, uh, this is roughly about an eighth of a pound, or if you really want to get down to it, it's about eight slices of prosciutto. And we'll set all that stuff aside. We're going to let this cook on one side, it'll be about two to three minutes, and then I'll show you what we're going to do next after this. After about a minute or two on the one side, we're going to flip these over. You can see the nice caramelization that occurs. That's going to give us flavor as well as texture when it comes to eating these, which everybody loves. And we're going to flip them over so this side is now down in that pan. Now after doing that, we're going to leave our temperature the same. The prosciutto is basically cooked at this point. We can just kind of push it off to the side in the pan. We don't have to fully remove it. But what we want to add now is the onions. And this is a half of a red onion. I'm not really going to worry about too much coloring on these at this point. They're going to cook for, again, three to four hours. So they're going to get nice and soft. They're going to develop a lot of flavor from this uh, braising liquid. I'm going to add celery. This is one stalk, just one stalk of celery, not a lot in there. And um, we're going to now add our garlic. Our garlic, we can use our garlic press for, or we can um, mince it with a knife or make it into a garlic paste with a knife. I'm going to press this down in there, and I want to add it at this point, not too early in the cooking process, 
of actually searing it. I don't want a lot of color on the garlic because I don't want it to burn and become bitter. But I can add it now while I have other ingredients in the pan. Let the beef brown up a little bit and then we can move on to our next stage. This will probably take about uh, another two minutes of cooking, two to three minutes of cooking. Again, you want it on medium, medium high heat. We'll scrape that garlic down into the pan and we'll just keep an eye on this over the next uh, few minutes. After about two minutes, we can now start to deglaze the pan. We're going to actually use some IPA beer to deglaze it with. This is a full beer. Get a good quality IPA. And I still have my temperature on medium high heat. I'm going to use a flat bladed spatula. And I'm just going to rub against the bottom of the pan back and forth to make sure I pick up if there's any cooked food that's stuck to the bottom of the pan. Just want to make sure I push that up. What happens is that the food that was stuck to the bottom now is released. That gets incorporated into the beer that we added. This is what the whole deglazing process is. A lot of times you'll see people use wine or some other sort of acid. The reason for that is to bring that flavor back into your sauce. Make sure though you're using a good quality spatula and a flat blade and just scrape the bottom of the pan back and forth. Notice that the beer in this case starts to boil right away. Once it starts to boil we want to bring this down to a simmer. And when it comes up to a boil, after we bring it down to a simmer, we're going to want to add our tomato paste. Our tomato paste we're going to add about one, one good tablespoon of tomato paste. And what this does is this allows us to give it a little bit of richness and body and color to this actual sauce. Stir well until it's fully incorporated. Once it's incorporated, your sauce is going to become a little bit darker. We can then add our three cups of chicken stock. And this is what the difference between stewing and braising. Braising the liquid is only going to be about three quarters of the way up the side of the oxtails. That's what you want. If we were stewing, we'd be using you know, maybe a gallon of chicken stock and the oxtails would kind of float around freely in here. This is braising. So three quarters of the way, we're going to let this cook now for about three hours. We're going to check on the tenderness of the beef. And at that three hour point, we're going to decide, do we add our carrots? Because we only want the carrots to go in there for about 30 minutes or do we need to let it cook a little bit longer? So remember we got about three hours at this point then we'll add our, our final vegetable which is the carrots and we're going to go ahead and finish it up. So let's go ahead and get a lid on this. Monitor our temperature, make sure it's on low. Don't want any bubbles breaking the surface or if you do maybe just one or two every now and then and we're good to go. It's been three hours now slowly braising in that beautiful beer and chicken stock and at this point we can add our carrots and what I have here is I have some heirloom carrots different colors and everything adds makes a beautiful presentation to the plate I'm just gonna add this in there make sure they get nice and submerged and we're gonna go ahead and put the lid back on the pot and we're gonna cook these for about 30 minutes we'll just check them at that point we want them to be tender we don't want them falling apart but just slightly tender al dente if you will and at this point we'll let it cook for again about another 30 minutes we'll come back and we'll check and see how it's doing I removed the carrots about maybe five ten minutes ago and I let the beef just kind of cook a little bit longer I increased the heat so it helped reduce a little bit of the liquid in here but all in all this is about four hours of cooking the carrots have been in there for about 30 minutes and now all we got to do is plate up and I think plate up is uh, super simple I lay those beautiful uh, heirloom carrots out on the platter giving them all that great looking color from those carrots and again you can do this with potatoes but be creative with it use a lot of different types of potatoes so there's sweet potatoes there's red potatoes and there's a lot of color and then you know you can pull the oxtails out of course we're going to need to get some of this sauce and some of this uh, braising liquid on there and with that will come your uh, uh, celery and onions as well and 
all I'll do is I'll just help lay it a little bit on top of each one. Make sure you dig down into the pot to grab if there's again any onions or carrots or, uh, or celery that's floating around down in there. And this smells just fabulous. I garnish this with just some parsley. Bring out some color again. And there you go, a nice hearty, very simple family style dish for you. Braised oxtails with a little IPA ale and uh, some heirloom carrots. Thanks again for watching Cooking from the Cave. I'm Chef Pete Truzek, and I will see you real soon.